Hi, my name is John Arakta. I'm a practicing architect and urban designer returning to UBC Solar to teach once again. And I'm happy to present you the option studio that I'm offering this term titled Experiments in Urbanisms of Public Benefit or Design for Essential Needs at the Strathcona Chinatown Falls Creek Flats interface. So to summarize briefly, this is an urbanism studio, meaning we will be dealing with urban form at the block scale. The studio is open to all option studio eligible designers at UBC Sala, and I would like to strongly encourage those who are looking to experiment uh, and or have completed their comprehensive studios and looking to get outside of their comfort zones uh, to consider taking the studio. In this studio, we will collectively develop at least one urban design proposition that amplifies the amount of public benefit offered by our site. We will also go into detailed design uh, of, of buildings and public realm within the urban design propositions we develop. We will aim to plan and design for land uses or programs that correspond to essential needs. That is housing, public amenity, public open space, and urban systems with a particular attention to urban food systems. And the residential industrial interface site in Vancouver will be our place for experimentation. And now let's get to know our site. Our site is an urban block located on the northern side of False Creek Flats, also called Squatches in the local um, Halkomelem language spoken by Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh people who have called this area home for thousands of years. So this was an inlet of the Salish Sea, and in early 20th century, it was reclaimed from, um, from the sea from being uh, an intertidal zone. It was transformed into uh, land, which then attracted a number of um, industrial uses. Opportunities for sustainable and resilient city building at various brownfield interface locations at False Creek Flats have been explored uh, since 2018 via different option studios. And our studio uh, will be a new one in that um, lineage of uh, design discourse, if you will. And this is the block that we'll be looking at defined by Prior and Malkin Streets to the north and south, and Strathcona Park to, to the east. Uh, we are between Strathcona Park, a very large urban park here, uh, and new St. Paul's campus, a new hospital campus of provincial magnitude, uh, already attracting um, new development around it as it is under construction. We're interfacing with Strathcona Chinatown, one of the oldest neighborhoods in Vancouver after uh, colonial settlement, uh, with its particular urban fabric uh, that we'll see more of shortly. Our urban block is also interfacing with an arterial condition as well as with the produce row, a segment of Malkin Avenue with a concentration of fresh food wholesalers, key for Vancouver's food security and distribution. And here we are between big box industrial logistics oriented uh, forms and a more fine grain narrow lot residential fabric. The existing urban form context here is quite diverse. There are corner stores, there's narrow lot housing developments that are low to mid rise but very fine grain, very human scale. Um, not only housing but also uh, community organizations especially those supporting the Chinese community and community here. This area is also home to block scale uh, social housing projects, uh, such as McLean Park or Stamps Place. And uh, on the produce row side, um, it is usually a combination of office and wholesale food logistics spaces, the priority given to uh, vehicular transportation. This is also an area going through urban transformation. Intensified forms, uh, usually including residential uses, are emerging. Also, new hybrids with industrial uses at the ground floors and residential uses up top, 
they're also becoming more common. City's False Creek Flats plan is likely the key element of at the long-range planning context for our site. This will be a point of departure for us, uh, but we will also have the opportunity to question um, certain considerations of the plan, especially regarding housing at False Creek Flats. This problem and this site will offer a number of opportunities to us to explore a number of design research and methodology questions. Our key design objective is to develop urban form that amplifies public benefit offered by the site. But it is really up to the designers to figure out, to discuss among themselves, and to figure out which public benefits are to be prioritized, can be, should be prioritized um, in their urban design propositions and detailed designs. That onto itself is a design research problem. Given the interface character of the site throughout the term, we'll discuss how a fine-grained non-industrial built form in its public realm might meet large-scale industrial uses. We will also explore how to approach new built form in public realm in the context of built environment heritage. Change management and temporality will be some of the key questions we'll tackle throughout the term. Namely, what parts of the site should change how much and when or in what order. A key consideration for the public realm will be to see how pedestrian orientedness, friendliness can work together with design for vehicular mobility. Broader questions we will tackle throughout the term are hybridization strategies to combine different land use or programs on a site, how to manage trade-offs between different forms of development, and also how to establish connections between qualitative and quantitative aspects of design, especially from a public benefit standpoint. And a few words about studio pedagogy and structure. The studio is structured in three consecutive segments, resulting in one project studied at different scales of intervention, that is neighborhood or block scale, and the building, public realm component scale. We will start with a kickoff. We will visit the site together and the participating designers will each be invited to share their first impressions in an icebreaker drawing exercise. Then segment one, titled The Whole, will start and will take about six weeks. So as four teams, the designers will first analyze the study area from uh, built form, infrastructure, food systems, public amenity, and public realm living systems lenses. Then for an analysis of public potential public benefit, the four teams will then uh, develop scenarios. The, these would be high-level test fits that prioritize a different public benefit corresponding to the lenses, the analysis lenses they had. Housing, including affordable housing and seniors independent living, urban food systems, including on-site food production, processing, distribution, and consumption, public amenity, including emergency management services, a grocery store, a drugstore, a child care facility, and a neighborhood house at, at a minimum, and public open space, park and a habitat area with a significant community garden component, as well as public washrooms. Then we will come together as a studio and discuss in charrettes and workshops how the different public benefits will be balanced, hybridized into one up to four consolidated urban design propositions for the whole. This would be documented as a formal submission akin to a schematic design package or booklet. So this is segment one. Segment two uh, will take four weeks and uh, we'll have four reconfigured teams where all segment one lenses are represented uh, within each team. The designers will then take on the detailed design of the parts that is spatial organization and materiality for key buildings and public realm components as they identified um, based on their segment one work. Then the final segment titled interface, and this will be uh, about two weeks long. The segment two teams in segment three will refine their detailed design work with particular attention to the built form public realm interface. If there are any updates needed on segment one work in light of detailed design findings, this is a good time to do it also. 
uh, we will do the final review in the form of a mini symposium. Basically, each of the four teams will make a case for the development scenarios uh, for the site from a public benefit standpoint. And the final deliverable of the studio will be schematic design booklets um, capturing the segment two and three work. And this will be due uh, later in December, the last day of winter session exams as identified by UBC calendar. The studio is very much based on teamwork and it is required, but individual scopes of work can be defined within a project team in consultation with the instructor. If you have any questions, any further questions about the studio, please feel free to reach out. My email is cotem at sala.ubc.ca. And a quick reminder that we'll kick off the semester with a site visit and icebreaker exercise. We'll meet on Friday, September 8th, the first day of class at 3 p.m. in front of La Casa Gelato, that is 1033 Venable Street. Uh, looking forward to meeting you there. Uh, please uh, feel free to uh, come early and try the hundreds of ice cream flavors they have to have a sweet start to the semester. And wishing everyone at UBC Sala a great fall semester.